So you just want to be able to play Warzone and not have that stutter and that lag and those drops in performance using your RTX graphics card. I've played many years of Call of Duty and I've boiled down the perfect in-game settings for graphics performance and overall fidelity using my RTX 3090 and you can follow along using the 3060, 3070, 3080 and heck even some of the 20 series cards. So let's jump into those perfect settings that are going to up your game in just a few minutes right now. Let's just jump in and get it started. First and foremost, open that NVIDIA control panel. Your resolution needs to be set up to the native resolution and your refresh rate needs to be set up to that refresh rate that's on your monitor. Mine is 144 Hertz and it's 1440p. Done. Within that resolution, you want to go down a little bit further and apply the following settings and use NVIDIA color settings. We can go ahead and make sure that G-Sync is functional because that is going to be where the bread and butter lies depending on what card you have and enable settings for the selected display. Now, something else, if you play in like a windowed non full screen mode, you want to enable for windowed and full screen for that G-Sync capability. Perfect, very simple, three settings to change there. That's all we have to do. Now let's jump into the game and I'll show you how I have mine set up. And again, I'm using the RTX 3090. My CPU is the Ryzen 7 3700X. I've got an X470 uh, Gaming Pro Carbon from MSI. You know, nothing too crazy uh, as far as equipment goes. As we jump into the game here and we get into settings, I'm gonna go through and break down each individual setting and tell you why I'm using that setting. Pretty straightforward, if you follow this, to a T, you're gonna get the best performance on your RTX card. This is not for AMD users. This is specifically for NVIDIA RTX 20 series, 30 series cards, because you will not have the same settings if you're using AMD. Just for anyone who's impatient and can't get through the descriptions that I have to offer here, I'm gonna blast through these settings just so you can see exactly what's here. For the most part, you just wanna make sure you're using the right display, right graphics card, it's at the right refresh rate, and your render resolution is 100%. And th there is an asterisk here because sometimes using DLSS or just logging into the game with like a 3080, 3090, it will actually scale up that resolution, which can hurt you with frames in game. Because if you go into the GeForce experience, and I'll actually kind of show you, let's look. Sometimes what this render resolution will say is 150%. So let's see if we can find one. Yep, we can see it right here. Resolution scale and resolution. Yep, it wants to scale it 175 times. You know, honestly, the recommended settings suck. Most of the time, the performance is terrible. And, uh, you know, if you want to play the game at a competitive level or at least enjoy the hardware level that you have, you've got to come in and change these settings. And these for me have been the best. Sync every frame. We want to disable this. We don't want it working against G-Sync. This is its own proprietary variable sync technology built into the game. Leave that disabled. If you need to set a custom frame rate because you're getting low frames in game, then you can. But I really urge you if you have a 30 series card, 20 series card to leave this on unlimited if you're using a panel that's 144 hertz or 165 hertz leave nvidia highlights off disable that uh, but it's processing that can be taken away from your 
actual CPU and giving you a bottleneck. Reflex low latency, definitely something you want to enable here. This is an NVIDIA feature that gives you a lower input lag uh, in game. And that's something that you want. Okay, moving down to details and textures. This is the meat and potatoes. This is where a lot of your performance is gonna be either had or taken away. So follow along very closely. Streaming quality, normal. This is what you want. Texture resolution, high. You want texture on the objects, surfaces, individuals, other players in the game that you're coming across. Otherwise, you may not be able to identify a flat surface, some grass, from an actual opponent that you're playing against. And as you see, as they make these changes, it's a big, big usage of VRAM in the game. So you wanna make sure that it is set to whatever your card is capable of. But again, using 2080, 2080 Ti, 3080, 3090, high, just high, all day. Texture filter, anisotropic. This again is improving texture quality uh, when viewed at an angle. There's some other benefits that Nvidia offers here, but this is something you want on. You want to be able to come at something at any angle and view that texture quality and not just have it render as you're moving. It's a pain in the ass when you go from very blurry to all of a sudden sharp and then bang, you get taken out. I mean, it happens all the time. Particle quality, very similar. You know, particle effects with throughout the map, whether it's an explosion, whether it's collision, whether it's gunfire hitting something and it breaking apart. You know, you want to see what's going on around you. So particle quality is important. Put that in as high as you possibly can. That's my setting. Bullet impact and sprays. This is a big one. This is usually disabled in game when you first get started. It's not Nvidia doing this. It is the game doing this. It disables it. But you want to be able to see whether you're hitting to the left or right of an opponent. You want to be able to make adjustments based on that uh in in change so if you're to the left you want to move a little right if you're to the right you want to move a little left and it hardly takes up any vram usage so why would you not have it on tessellation now this is a big one you guys i spent some time testing out tessellation in game and again tessellation what it does if you take a look here it explains it pretty well it takes like a flat flat style object that has no structure to it and raises or, or changes and adds structure to those objects. Another person would probably say, oh yeah, turn this bad boy on. Uh, but I actually went in and tested this out on grass, on rock surfaces, on edges, on corners, and I didn't see any difference using an RTX card. And that's because I have DLSS enabled. So if you have DLSS enabled, you need to disable tessellation because DLSS already offers it. We'll get into that in just a minute. Okay, on-demand texture streaming. So you can enable this, right? But what's really going to happen is you're going to be utilizing more of your data in storage on the computer to, to download and hold this information for the day. And that could change day to day. So you're constantly going to be having downloads, storage, cache that it has to pull from. Another big performance metric here is shadow and lighting. And let me tell you, some of these are very important, so don't skip ahead here. Shadow map resolution, extra. This is huge. I literally watched a player the other day in a kill cam save his own ass because he, there was nobody in his actual field of view. And all he could see was a shadow jump over him and land on the other side. And he quickly turned before that person could get to him and actually took that person out. It was an eight kill kill streak uh, and it was the play of the game. And it was because he had his shadow map resolution turned up. It, you know, I don't know if it was on extra, I assume it was uh, because I saw exactly what he saw. We're probably both using RTX cards. There is a bit of VRAM utilization here. So if you need to put this on high rather than extra, go for it. If you're using like a 3070, 3060, 2070, 2060, cache spot shadows and cache, cache sun shadows, fully enabled, man. This is gonna help those renders happen faster as you move throughout the map. So the more you play throughout the map of Warzone, the more those cache spots are gonna be saved to be able to access them on demand when needed. And it's less work your GPU has to do at the time you're playing. Particle lighting, ultra. Very important. This goes with the previous setting, the particle quality. So the quality is high. Now we're getting to the lighting. 
You know, do you see any type of shadow from that? What direction is it coming from? Is there somebody standing in the way of that particle lighting or to the side of it? Are you getting my point here? You're getting the ultimate edge over your opponent because you're able to see things they can't. So onto the direct X-ray tracing, honestly, probably one of the biggest reasons that you bought an RTX card versus maybe something like DLSS and just the raw capability, direct X-ray tracing is is huge. It's a, a, an advancement in technology that we all have invested in at this time. Now in past generations, it has struggled. So if you're utilizing a 20 series card, I don't really recommend that you turn this ray tracing capability on unless you have like a 2080, 2080 Ti. If you're using a 30 series card, uh, 3070, 3080, 3090, then there's a vastly big difference in this ray tracing capability and I highly encourage you to turn it on. Now, it, it pairs really well with DLSS because DLSS will actually do some sort of compression almost to give you the full performance of ray tracing while lowering the actual toll it takes on your graphics card. In this scenario, using a 30 series graphics card, you want your direct X ray tracing to be enabled. Ambient occlusion, this we want on. We want both to be on. As you can see here, there are a couple different options and sometimes it's, its default is disabled. So there's static objects, dynamic objects. We want both. What does that mean? It means that objects like buildings, stationary objects, vehicles, things like that are going to give you shadow points uh, not just a flat surface with a, str a strip of shadow on it. Dynamic means you're gonna be able to see surfaces of moving, moving objects, things like helicopters, vehicles, uh, potentially other opponents as well, and be able to make out kind of that depth of field of where they're at in response to what you're doing. Screen space reflections. This is almost identical to the previous uh, shadow map resolution that we talked about. Now, if you have a, a puddle on the ground and you're peeking around a corner and you have screen space reflections on high, you're going to be able to see an opponent that's coming around that corner in the reflection of that pond. And that's huge because you can make a response to that person before they can if they're not using this feature. And again, we're not using much VRAM here, so keep it on high. Okay, post processing effects. This is where DLSS plays a huge role in your performance gain here. So filmic strength, filmic strength, what it does, it takes an object that may render and have artifacts. It may not render properly and it smooths them out. It rounds it out by adding almost like a filter over that particular object to round it out uh, and give it a smooth like surface. DLSS does this already. That is one of the features of DLSS. So you really don't need this on. This is out of a scale of 100. You could have it at zero, but I want to fail safe just in case something doesn't render properly. I don't want a gun. And you guys have probably seen this in the game. Your gun renders and it has all these artifacts sticking off of it because it's not processing correctly. Well, this filmic strength will help. And so will DLSS. If you're playing it, 1440p, you want to be in quality or balanced. Quality is going to give you what they say the best performance for 1440p, but I've noticed that balance actually gives you a higher frame rate while re retaining as much fidelity as you can. And in my experience, it's been better for me. If you have all these settings, the same that I do, your anti-aliasing will automatically be set to filmic SMAA T2X because that's what's compatible with all the other settings that we have done. Okay, depth of field, enabled. World motion blur, disabled. Weapon motion blur, disabled. Film grain, 0.15. Film grain, I don't like it. I don't like motion blur. I love depth of field. It allows you to look through a scope, maybe an iron sight where you're not honed into just that one circle and you can get a, a feel for how far you are from that opponent that you're looking at or that object that you're looking at because you get that depth of field blurred vision out here, but you can still make out your peripheral. Film grain is gonna give texture to surfaces that are normally just very smooth. So you need a little bit of texture, otherwise it just looks very blocky. I'm gonna go through a little bit of gameplay so you guys know I'm not lying. You'll be able to see 
uh, my performance in the top right of the screen. Uh, and you'll be able to see what I get utilizing the 3090 uh, in game with all of these settings. So let's cap out this video with this. And please, you guys, if this helped you in any way, subscribe to the channel. We have tons of content, 90 plus videos, but we can't do it without you. And I want to keep growing this channel. So please hit that subscribe button, like the video, because we have so much more to share with you in playlist upon playlist of awesome gaming tech. Learn how to build, create, and let's game. 105, 108, 116, 1440p resolution, 100 plus frames per second in game. This is legit. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose this hardcore.